Hello, everybody, and welcome to Poll Focus, the cinema-based entertainment podcast where a couple of freelancers come together to talk shop. My name is Mike, and as always, I am joined by my brother in crime, a man so regal, many have described him as a king. A man so tough, he could survive in the harshest conditions, regardless of hydration. He's got the sugar, the spice, and everything nice. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Robert Andrus. I am all of those things. Thank you so much for, for, for making everybody know that. Uh, to do the thing. You have thing. shared the person that I truly am. Thank you for that. And, My um, absolute pleasure. I love I'm it how, just, like, I love it, like, in I'm the warm-up. I'm just going to say ditto. To yeah, yeah, I'll thank and, you, sir. And you're, you're my, you're my Bautista. You're my, <laughs> you're my Momoa. You're my Bardem. I love it, dude. Likewise, likewise. I love it how like we we always nobody knows this because we don't put it into the podcast. But prior to us uh, like getting into it and actually getting into the show and everything, you and I both like have like this this like diary of the mouth kind of where we're like, can you believe what happened last week and blah blah blah. And we are all right. our, all of our problems and our frustrations, and then right. we jump into the show, and the first thing out of your mouth makes me laugh and happy. It's like this weird weird dichotomy where I'm just happy to be happy to be talking about something that I care I about. I am you know? joy. Yeah, I am pure joy. It's I true. am happiness, and I am happy to share that with the world. You're welcome. You're, everybody, everybody. <laughs> Everybody says they're welcome. Now you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Absolutely. Uh, so it's a pleasure to be speaking with everybody. It's a pleasure to be speaking with you, and it's a pleasure to be uh, heard by everybody out there. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, it's been a little bit of time since we last got together and recorded, but uh, this is going to be a pretty big episode. That is going to be about a pretty epic film, honestly. Uh, but before we jump into it, Andrus, uh, what's the state of play uh, with Salt Lake and uh, what you got going on? Uh, we were talking a little bit about how um, at the day of this recording, it's about a week or two uh, ahead of Thanksgiving. Production is going through the roof as usual. And I and I, I have this bad habit of like saying like, oh, there's so much business and everything here. And it is, it's, definitely, it's definitely a bad habit that I have that I'm trying to work mm-hmm. on because early in the year, when, and this will start cooling down in 2022, like once, once February rolls around, things are going to slow down a little bit. But... Uh, Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe not. Who knows? We live in a different world maybe. now, Robert. Right. We live in a different world now, especially when it comes to the entertainment industry. Um, but talk to me about, you know, the uh, the the the, uh, the commercial season that's happening right now. Talk to me about how things are much more complicated uh, with uh, the fourth quarter of the year coming to an end, and how things are ramping up for uh, Sundance and everything coming up in twenty twenty two. Well, I'm excited for Sundance. We're going to see what happens there because, you know, there's so many things that are happening with the pandemic yeah. that we'll see whether or not they're going to continue to go out with what the plan is, which is to have the festival mm-hmm. live, do do all of that. Y- you know, it's, it's super iffy still. I, I I would I would not be surprised if they did a, a cancellation or if they went virtual again or yeah. if they did some sort of hybrid or limit the number of people or or whatever. But um it, it is it is what it is as all of us are getting used to dealing with is this is the new norm, yeah. which is adapt adapt and, and overcome and move but, on and, yeah. and and move forward i don't even want to say move on adapt and move forward i gotcha because we don't have another choice no we don't no you're um, absolutely right we have to be but, safe and we have to we have to jump through additional hurdles but it's, it's it's all for uh you know it's just because we're we're it's resulting from the environment that people are still doing production in yeah but there's no there's no shortage of movies coming out there's no yeah. shortage of movies being made um you mentioned commercial season and it's just like commercial after commercial after commercial right now, at least in our market. Yeah. And that's largely due to uh, fiscal year end ending um, situations or just our location. Yeah. We have an amazing location in Utah that everybody wants to come to. Uh, We'll we'll see where everything lands, but right now um, I haven't had a break since um, 1902. (laughs) So, so, Um, it, you, it, it's, it's been busy for quite some time right. and, um, it hasn't really slowed down. It'll be interesting to see if we do and see where we have to adapt there. I'm going to surprise you a little bit because we didn't 
cover this like uh, in our in our, our, our warm up for the show, but it is something that I've been wanting to ask you a little bit about and okay. like, t- take a little bit of time with it. How do creatives, uh, especially ones that are multifaceted like you, you're handling your own uh, acting career and doing spots uh, where you can, you're getting commercial yeah. work here and there, but also you're uh, handling the casting end as well in right. the agency. How do you, how do, how do, how would a creative deal with uh, burnout, especially during like this time of year? Oh, me, I just push through. And then if I, if I fatigue myself to the point of exhaustion, then I take a break and then I just dive back in. But I've always been kind of an adrenaline junkie when mm-hmm. it comes to work. Mm-hmm. Um, some people I don't think would challenge the fact that I'm a workaholic. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's definitely something that I feel um, more so at the end of the year than at the beginning of the year. Yeah, but, that makes sense. But I don't just cast i don't just act i also coach actors i also work production whenever whenever the opportunity is given i also um uh uh, travel to and from to watch plays and and watch premieres and do everything entertainment my life is the entertainment industry i've I've, I've called you on more than one occasion and you've been out of town and you've been like you know down south or whatever just just taking time to decompress i'm not worried about I'm not worried about you, like you know, uh, working yourself into the dirt, but uh, I'm I'm glad that uh, it's all about finding that balance, right? It's about finding that balance of of doing the work that invigorates you, but being able to recognize the signs when you have to take a break. Well, and that that's an interesting comment because um, when we first started with um, with virtual casting with the pandemic, yeah, um, there was a huge adjustment on my part as far as the give and take and the um, the energy exchange that happens in a casting session. Of course, yeah. Um, I I was always uh, used to because I've been doing this for a long time now. When talent comes in, there's that energy energy exchange of oh hello how yeah, are you hello, doing you what's them. going on yeah. and and then the goodbyes and all of that and you know some days were harder than others but there was always that human to human interaction exchange of energy. Yeah. Once we went to virtual. It was all output. Yeah, yeah I dude. wasn't getting anything back. So it must be like a, a different kind of animal to deal with. Like, how can you read people that? And it's right. your, it's your, it's your job to put the, uh, to put the appropriate piece in the puzzle. Like you're trying right. to find the person who's going to be a good lead for the spot or for the, right. for the series or for the whatever. And I can only the imagine project, yeah. the project. It, it must be much, it much, it must be more difficult when you're you're dealing with. I mean, literally, literal bandwidth, you know, you're on the internet it's, doing whatever. It's and this is what we're doing right now. It's, yeah. it's um, literally, you just said the answer that, that is going to be my answer at the top right. of the show, which is, Andres, the first thing that you said made me happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you. I, I, because you're happy from that. Yes. I get that back. And there's that exchange that happens. So but it's, it was just an adaptation. Is all an adaptation. It was. That's a, that's a yeah. good positive attitude. And, and I, oh, Well, who are you talking to? Really? <laughs> I'm gonna make you a star. Okay, cool. Well, I appreciate that. I've I've been wondering yeah. about that for a minute, and it's it's important for people who are listening to. I'm not saying that like you know we have a whole uh, uh, cultish following of actors and creatives or anything like that. Maybe we do, but if you're out there and like you know you're working really hard for something you love, that's fine. But don't be afraid to take a day off. That's all I'm saying. But um, yeah, and you know, or or just a break. Yeah, whatever level of break that is, it's just breathe. Yeah. I've been doing a lot of meditation too, so that helps. That's great. Me too. Yeah. Cool. Well, listen. Uh, one of the things that we can meditate about is whether or not the film we're going to be speaking about this episode is good or not. The uh, the <laughs> the implications and the challenges that were brought forth, and uh, really just uh, the, the the mammoth undertaking when it came to production cast traveling a uh, a worldwide production with this one that i uh, was trying to encompass the universe in a very large sandbox we're going to be talking about dune my planet arrakis is so beautiful when the sun is low rolling over the sands you can see spice in the air The outsiders ravage our lands in front of our eyes. Their cruelty to my people is all I've known. What's to become of our world? A 
boy. <laughs> Duncan, can I trust you with something? Yes, always, you know that. I've been having dreams about a girl on Arrakis. I don't know what it means. Dreams make good stories. But everything important happens when we're awake. Hey, yeah, you. Put on some muscle? I did? No. We are House Atreides. There is no call we do not answer. There is no faith that we betray. Smile, Gurney. I am smiling. The Emperor asks us to bring peace to Arrakis. House Atreides accepts! I know you. There's only awakening in my mind. You need to face your fears. Come with me. You need to be ready. You never met Harkonnens before. They're not human, they're brutal. The Duke's son sees too much. This is I do. Kill them all. God in heaven. Get everything with guns off the ground! Go! This is an extermination. They're picking my family off one by one. Let's fight like demons. Dad, what if I'm not the future of House Atreides? A great man doesn't seek to lead. He's called to it. But if your answer is no, you'll still be the only thing I ever needed you to be. My son. If anything happens, will you protect Paul? With my life. Only together can we stand a chance. And uh, that was a trailer of Dune. Uh, this is one of those situations where I'm a little remorseful in regards to how much stuff was put into the trailer. We get a lot of stuff that is uh, are kind of like um, a couple of red herrings, but also some things that... I mean, th- 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 this uh, this movie, Andrus. You know, let's just go into the, uh, into the synopsis. And uh, we'll, yeah. uh, we'll jump in for a second. <clears throat> a mythic and emotionally charged hero's journey, Dune tells the story of Paul Atreides, a brilliant and gifted young man born into a great destiny beyond his understanding, who must travel to the most dangerous planet in the universe to ensure the future of his family and his people. As malevolent malevolent, forces explode into conflict over the planet's exclusive supply of the most precious resource in existence, a commodity capable of unlocking humanity's greatest potential, only those who can conquer their fear will survive. Uh, So this, of course, is another take at the science fiction drama that was originally uh, written back in the, oh man, 50s and 60s. Uh, This is a feature adaptation of uh, Frank Herbert's novel uh, that was published decades ago. Uh, This is definitely a, and you can kind of see this in the film too, Andrews. This was first attempted uh, way back with uh, the original Dune, uh, way back in like 1984, I think it was. Uh, taking a look and seeing, yeah, 1984, uh, which was a uh, uh, a two hour and 17 minute long uh, feature film, which uh, back in those days was uh, pretty adventurous, where it tried to uh, go through and uh, tell the entire story in uh, under uh, uh, three hours, so, uh, starting like you know Kyle MacLachlan, uh, Francesca Annis, uh, Virginia Madsen, uh, Leonardo Leonardo uh, uh, Camino. Uh, a lot of uh, incredible actors, Linda Hunt, uh, a lot of incredible actors that, you know, uh, in, the, in those decades and that time were able to make great careers for themselves. We're seeing a kind of like a parallel of that with the cast in this film. A lot of actors that uh, have yet to really prove uh, that they have the chops to be in a uh, multi multinational blockbuster and also some actors that have done more than uh, prove that they have the capability of being able to right. be. 
uh, under this challenge, which is something I found inform- interesting. Uh, we have leads by uh, Timothy Shalamad, uh, Zende- Zendaya, and then we also have like you know hard hitters like Josh Brolin, Oscar Isaac, uh, Jason Momoa. I'll give it to him. Uh, plays Duncan Idaho, but of course he's just playing uh, Aquaman again. He's just doing it. it, he, it no, it, he is playing Jason Momoa. Momoa. <laughs> <laughs> not Aquaman. I always thought They're it was different. I, I always They're thought different. It, was, it was Aquaman, but it was like on a bigger beach. That's what Dune was. <laughs> uh, and of course, like we have really stunning performances actually by uh, Rebecca Ferguson, who played uh, uh, Lady Atreides, and uh, Sharon Duncan Brewster. Uh, Bautista comes out there. We have Charlotte Rampling coming in, and uh, of course the uh, the Skarsgård makes their uh, ma- makes their uh, their hit on this movie, uh, playing the Baron. Um, this is one of those films that, due to the source material being so big, uh, Dune uh, in the industry, Dune is known to be like this kind of like this cursed production. Not as bad as like you know Hamlet or Macbeth or anything with like that much backstory to it. But because people have tried to make film adaptations of this, uh, there was a television series called The Children of Dune, uh, you know, a decade or so ago that was on Sci-Fi Channel. It was pretty good, a bit of a mini- miniseries. Uh, there were attempts at making animated features for this. The thing is that uh, when we're dealing with like source material like this, uh, Herbert's novel is thousands of pages long. It has like a whole kind of uh, arcing series that takes a long time to process, a long time to read. And it, it wasn't the first thing that was published, but later we realized that this isn't the first movie in the series. I think, honestly, they're trying to do something that is in uh, kind of like parallel the, uh, the Star Wars trilogy, where now that Dune, uh, which is now known as like Dune Part 1 officially uh, in the... Uh, and the, uh, you know, the, the variety and everything like that, the, the technical and whatnot. Um, now that it's made some money, they have the capability of being able to go in with like two more or who, who knows what's going to happen. But the problem that they're dealing with, and Andrews, this is where I want to open up our conversation, uh, is that because they're trying to tackle such a large order here, uh, there's fandom in regards to this, uh, to this IP. There's a lot of stuff happening with the capabilities people have to kind of make these, yeah, these characters more real. The movie is not hitting as hard as people would like it to. It had a great ad campaign. It had really good marketing behind it. And honestly, I think the cast is pretty strong, which is what we'll talk about later on. But what are some of the main obstacles that you felt in watching it that leads you to believe that getting a full trilogy out of this IP is going to be an uphill battle? Uh. Big question right out of the gate, as usual. That's a really big question because... And also, after you're done answering that, what's the nothingness of being? Well, the nothingness (laughs) of being is just being. Oh, man. I mean, that was an easy answer. The other one's a more difficult one. (laughs) But but I I will say I I quite enjoyed this movie. Yeah. And I I went in kind of blind as far as... I remember the Dune movie from 1984. I'm honestly a big fan. Probably probably like my nostalgia. My nostalgia goblins are kind of like, you know, doing a lot of heavy lifting with that. But I'm a big fan of the 84 film for sure. I really really wasn't. I I, I mean, I remember seeing it, but I wasn't really blown away with the cast then. It had Sting in it. What are you talking about? uh, Believe me, if I go back and watch it now, I'm going to love it. Okay. (laughs) Just shut your face right, right, for right, a right. second. Sorry, sorry, okay? sorry. Yes. Only because it has Sting in it. Thank <laughs> you. Um, well, uh, okay. Sting and Patrick Stewart and Virginia Madsen oh, yeah, and Kyle right. McLaughlin and and uh, 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 Linda Linda Hunt yeah, and all of it. Everybody else that was in that. I'm sure it's wonderful. Um, but but for me, I I went in blind on purpose. And when it sure. said and it said the end of, or when it said the opening credits part one, I'm just like, ah, shit. <laughs> Cause I thought I was going in for a full, for a full experience. Yeah, exactly. And now part right. of the story, apparently right. like I, right. I have yet to get a complete consensus on this from like, you know, people who know better than I do, but apparently this is like, this movie is supposed to encompass the first quarter of the original novel. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Or maybe like the first third, something like that. It's, it's, it, it doesn't really matter. When we're, when we're dealing with like huge, epic story structure like this, right. uh, I'm glad it's three parter. Yeah, me too. But like again, I don't I don't see this thing really working 
from a fan perspective, really working very well, unless it takes a miniseries format. This is something that, like, you know, that's why that's why we have Game of Thrones. Mm. That's why, because because uh, we were able to... I mean, but then again, I mean, Jackson did a good job with, like, you know, the Tolkien estate, but I mean, it's... Yeah. it's it's a mixed bag. I just I'm nervous about this because I'm a Dune I'm a Dune fan. I I, I read half of Herbert's novel oh, when I was younger, it. way back in the day. I've never been able to finish it. Uh, and stop it. Then you're <laughs> then you're just coming from a really horrible place. I am kind of biased. I'm trying to kind of hoping for this. You only one. read half of it. See, yeah. I read none of it. So I'm coming <laughs> in from a great place. So your opinion definitely means more than mine. It That's just means true. way more because it's not biased. What um, no, but. But what I will say is I'm really glad that it's a three-parter because, yeah. because then I do get a full scope. And I am a fan of the mini, mini series, um The Children of Dune. St- storytelling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, facet of, of m- movie making. Because you get a, full, a, a, a more full sense of what the whole story is. And I don't mind waiting from time to time to yeah, see the, the other... Um, the other um, additions to the story i do like i mean we're used to that with tv series anyway yeah especially nowadays right with everything streaming and sections and everything i do like the more modern take on this in regards what's going on they definitely took some inspiration from the original film but that's one thing that i i do want to put into the plus column like the pacing on this movie was all over the place i i didn't like the way in which like some of the pauses uh, came through and how i couldn't clearly define where the the acts were beginning and ending but I kind of liked it. That's okay. Uh, yeah. I, I can respect why people would like it. it. It's a beautiful piece of cinematography, and the CGI mm. is. Let's just, you know, talk about that later. Chef's kiss. Yeah. Wow. Let's do it now. I mean, like that's one of the strengths we're going to talk about. Let's talk about well, the strengths first. I want you to finish and, your thought, though. I want you, I well, want you to finish your thought. Well, that's. I, I had a problem trying to find balance in this because okay. I, I at one point I'm like looking at the scene and like you know the uh, the space freighters are coming in they're landing on this desert sea and it's just this beautiful majestic thing and then it cuts to like them having dinner or something like that and it felt like a right. little choppy but the thing that i really did enjoy uh when it came to the uh, uh the, the way in which things are like stretched out was the quiet tension when it comes to the 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 uh the um uh, the royal family when we have Shalome, ferguson and isaac coming together they have a real chemistry. I really did believe that uh, 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 Leto Atreides and Jessica Atreides, you know, the, uh, the the heads of the household, that they really loved each other. And that's because Ferguson and Isaac have this really beautiful way of being able to portray things quietly. There's this beautiful scene before they're going to go to uh, the planet Arrakis. And uh, Timothy Chalamet's character, Paul, uh, he's already dealing with like these... Oh, I hit my microphone. Wow. Uh, is already dealing with like these, these psychic attacks because like this, th- this story is, this story is the hero's journey and, and it's really like a basic hero's journey because it was written back in the sixties. We have Timothy Chalamet playing the Jesus figure. He's Luke giving Skywalker, Luke Skywalker, uh, you know, uh, King Arthur, whatever you want to call it. And he's getting Leo. these, Leo, exactly. Neo, he is the one and he's getting these psychic images because we find out later in the film. Uh, oh, Oh, wait a minute. Spoiler alerts. Spoiler alerts. Uh, if you guys have not seen Dune, turn off this podcast. We're going to ruin it for you. But anyway, uh, we find out later that uh, Paul was never meant to be born. Yeah, the uh, the Atreides family was supposed to only have female heirs to the kingdom. And that was because they knew that uh, Jessica Atreides was one of these... Uh, sisters of the Jesuits, uh, or the Jesuits, a mystic uh, of sorts. A mystic of sorts. It's like this religion that is, you know, the uh, uh, the, uh, the 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 consulary for the empire. You know, the uh, that's made up of these different royal houses that make up the solar system or the universe or whatever. And we find out that Paul actually has the gifts of a mystic, but the uh, warrior mentality of you know of of a, of a hero bound in glory and that kind of stuff, which means he's very mm-hmm. he's very dangerous to the current em- emperor. So he's a royal to both families. Exactly. So what happens is that we have these scenes where we begin to do this this normal shtick where it comes into like, you know, uh, Timothy Chalamet does a really good job of being able to have like this mystical kind of fear uh, that I think he portrays real well. Uh, he Numerous times a character is asking, what the hell is happening to me? What's going on? And you can really see it in Chalamet's performance, I think. He's a very young actor. Uh, he has the capability, though, I think, of being uh, a really great one. And this is really a good opportunity for him. I think he handles it very well. And one of the ways that he does, like going back to my original statement, was in the scene that he had with Oscar Isaac, where uh, Paul and, uh, and the Duke are uh, on their planet. They're about to go to Arrakis. And uh, Oscar Isaac has this beautiful line. 
where uh, he says, you know, well, I'm paraphrasing, but he says something along the lines of, you know, uh, the kingdom may fall or you may have to be a man that has to make bad decisions, so on and so forth. But uh, in the end, even if we fail, you've already succeeded in being what you've had to be. And that's my son. And that's, this is this beautiful thing where, like, you have, like, this emotional point that Isaac and Shalome, to his, to his credit, play very well. And that is throughout the entire movie. And it's not just uh, on the on the good guy side. It's also so, on the villain side, too. So I'm, I'm glad you said that because that that's the scene at the at the planetary cemetery yeah. or yeah. or what? Yeah. OK. Um, th- there were a couple of things that they did as a family where it showed their connection yeah. to each other. Yeah. And, and a lot of that was nonverbal. It wasn't just through the dialogue or through the They scenes. were having dinner together. And I mean, like it, it, was, it's, 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 it was beautifully put together. Yeah. It really was. And I, I'm going to just sing praises about Denis Villeneuve the entire time because OMG, yeah, no I want to work with Denny. So Denny, if you hear me, hello, <laughs> I want to work with you. Um, it's just one, it's beautiful cinematography, but it's yeah. also beautifully directed. And maybe the pacing I want you to to remember this conversation about the pacing and the rhythm of it. Yeah. Because maybe it's set up for part one to part two to part three. They kind of like up the action. As an, like over, a as an all-encompassing situation. I really so. enjoy that. I mean, it is something that we've come to see from uh, uh, from uh, uh, Villeneuve where he's already been, has us established as a style. We're talking mm-hmm. with somebody who knows what they want and knows what they can do, and they do it very well. Not only from a uh, photography uh, standpoint, but also, of course, from like a framing and a storytelling standpoint. Blade Runner did this, Arrival did this, and uh, Sicario did this. Uh, mm-hmm. These are movies that have, that spit action at you every once in a while, but the major turmoil, I think, is is stronger when it comes to the character interaction. And you can see this entire framework in his previous work. And it's also why, you know, Arrival, when it first came out, got Oscar nods because of, like, just the uh, the competency of the way in which it was telling that story. I don't think Dune is going to be, you know, of course, it isn't going to be like an Oscar winning kind of kind of situation, maybe for cinematography or something it, like that. It's going to be for cinematography, maybe direction, maybe, and direction. maybe even um, maybe even all of the other special effect type things. But he has um, I, I think like what you just said is is something that's really going to kind of keep me up at night uh, when it comes to this movie. We're not going to know what the director's idea was for the series until the series is done. And that's exciting. That's an exciting yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, when we talk then about like how there's like that interaction, let's talk a little bit about how uh, the effects came into play as well. Um, we have had history with sci-fi being either this brilliant capability that people have to really show off their CGI and their interaction right. in that regard, mm-hmm. or it can be a complete dumpster fire. It, usually, <laughs> it's either it's either one or the other. And it's right. like it's like it's like that. Um, it's just because of the 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 the, the uh, suspension of disbelief, the uncanny valley, and that kind of thing. I thought that the way in which they were ever they they were able to take notes where they could from the first film in '84 to now, where they were able to incorporate like you know the bio shield and like the different explosions and like the way in which people were fighting with knives and that kind of stuff. What were your feelings in regards to the uh, the effects that popped up with this? Like, did it outshine the dialogue? Did it outshine the acting? Did it outshine the cinematography? Or did you think that this was a good supporting part? of like the overall, the overall movie. You know, it, for, for me, it was just a, um, a, a stage setting more than anything. Um, I, okay. I don't know how I've, how I've formed an opinion on that other than it was competent and it was believable. And I really, really enjoyed um, kind of the seamlessness that they had with creating the practical world with the uh, CG world. There was definitely some Cameron I, kind of stuff going on for sure. I, I, I bought, I bought all of it. Yeah. I, I didn't, I was never taken out of it because of a CG element. Yeah. So, and that, that's what I look for the most. Like if you can yeah, really like, I really tell, enjoyed that. I, I think that like you bring up like the set design and everything they went all over the world uh, to it was film beautiful. this movie and it was beautiful. Uh, I'm going to take a little note here from the Wikipedia article that we have here. Uh, principal photography began on March 18th, 2019 at Origo film studios in Budapest, Hungary and also took place in uh, Wadi Room in Jordan. 
uh, the planet Caladan, one of the settings of the film, was filmed in uh, Stavlinet in Norway. Uh, I apologize for mispronouncing all of these. Uh, well, but, that's okay because it's a beautiful area. Yeah, so it's who gorgeous, cares how right? You say it. That's where the uh, that's where they filled uh, they uh, filmed the graveyard scene that we just mentioned. Uh, filming also took place in the uh, Liwa Oasis in the uh, United Arab Emirates, uh, which formed okay. a key backdrop for Arrakis. Primary filming was completed in July 2019 with Brian Herbert confirming the filming had wrapped in July 26, 2019. Additional filming took place in Budapest, uh, and it, would ha- it was uh, not expected to alter the film's uh, previous December 2020 release date. It was shot, check this out, it was shot for IMAX format. Uh, with IMAX certified Ari Alexa LF, and they got permission to use an IMAX certified Alexa Mini LF prototype the first time that this technology had ever been used for any kind of production. So we're we're dealing with like this film that may be... So this is is the big thing that kind of bothers me about this because we're dealing with a film that very, very well could change a major facet of the way the job is done. Um, Alexa has been doing movies and has been making new technology. And I, mean, I can't talk enough about it because it's just like this. It's like Technicolor. You know, that company has done so much for production and everything. It's mind boggling. But we get like the capability to be able to have these cool aspect ratios, these new effects, this new way of filming. And we get it for this movie. And it's kind you, of disappointing for me. You, you know, I, I understand what you're saying, but what movie would be valuable for that? I don't one that was maybe are, are, argue your point. Which one would be better? The next Indiana Jones movie, or like yes, you know, stop it, or no. the or the uh, the uh, uh, no. Think about cinematic. Uh, I guess maybe the remake of Schindler's List or something like that. You no, know what I mean? No, think of cinematic. Um, I don't know. Um, uh, the remake of The Hobbit. I guess I have no idea. Something... Thank you. <laughs> yes, something like that. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, but but I mean, this was still like a world setting. That, I mean, Michael Bay's movies take us all over the world. That's but true. They're in flashy cars. The next Michael and, Bay like, movie would have been good for and for... super expensive. But I mean, I mean, which which one would it be? And I, and I'm just arguing for argument's sake because no, I'm glad you are for sure. I'm I'm fine with it being this movie. But what would be the next step? And I would I would say maybe something that that. Um, the next disaster movie yeah, yeah. that that takes out the entire world, nice a Poseidon dinosaur or setting right. or a Jurassic Park, something that's just on the scope of seeing the world. Yeah, but some, those something that's more marketable too that has better pacing than this movie did. See, that's the mm-hmm. thing. Like we're talking about how how technically speaking, this movie is gorgeous. It's a yeah. gorgeous. It's like a painting in every painting in every, every frame. single one. Is it like it's gorgeous? It, it's absolutely. There's just no other way to say it. it's gorgeous. But the phrasing in which they're trying to push the the storytelling is disjointed. There, there. I, I have problems being able to understand why certain acts end where they do. Why they decided to just take this particular part of the book to try and make it, you know, a part of the cinema or whatever. Why not take less and just like dive into more character uh, stuff because you have such a good cast that can do that so quietly and, and competently. Why did we have to have a movie that was three hours long that had only one climax, uh, you know, an, uh, an two hours in, and we don't know where it ended. We have no idea what's going to happen to the characters. We have no idea how things are going to go. If, we, if there was somebody who didn't read the book first or saw the previous movie, they would be like, is, is that it? Is that the ending? Because it's a three-parter. I know, but there's ways in which you can do You're absolutely right, first of all. You're absolutely <laughs> right. But there's ways in which you can do that so that things are more gratifying. You, now, can make it, I, you can make it more simple for people to understand, oh, okay, the movie's over. Can't wait for the next one. So so that actually happened for me, which is why I wasn't Please disappointed explain. in this movie. Please I don't explain. know. So, so He has a um, knife fight and they walk into the horizon and no, that's no, no, it? I mean, no, get the fuck. Yes, 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 yes. Because listen, because listen, it is the first step of the hero's journey. For me, this was very, very much a similar story as A New Hope. Oh, okay. No. Okay. So, okay. If if you go mm. if you go and compare this to a new hope, I think you have the same outcome, and I think it's a good stage for. I, I mean, people are probably going to like <laughs> holler and scream and yell at me. The thing like, is, is that like threat, I don't threaten threaten me with violence. <laughs> the but, thing is that I, I I would be doing that, but I think you're right. I mean, we am I? I think so. 
I, so, so I have, n- I have nothing else to really compare it to because I'm not going off of any nostalgia. Yeah. Yeah. I feel I'm not like going I'm... off of the book in my mind. I'm just going off of the movie that was presented to me. Right. So I got, I got a foundation of what the world and what these characters are. We got, um, we have, did oh, you, man. did you, start, baby... I did start, start spoiling, hit, hit the spoil okay, button like a million spoiler times. Alert. Like just spoiler give me like alert. three or four. Just keep going. <laughs> spoiler alert. Because I'm just going to go. Spoiler alert. Right? They've been warned. Go ahead. So so you have an Obi-Wan. You have a Princess Leia. You have you have a Luke Skywalker. Oh, Jesus. You have a Darth Vader. Yes. You have all of these. You have an Empire. You have a Resistance. You have all of these elements in there. Mm-hmm. And then at the end, you have this epic battle. And I mean, it's not super epic, but it's epic enough that his life is threatened. He loses some there's, people. There's something that he overcomes. Yeah. And then you also have loss. You also have um, um, a, a um, an overcoming of a challenge. Um, you have a, a, a growth Villeneuve. in your power, in your confidence, in who you are. He's having visions. He has a lightsaber. He has the force. He has all of the things that 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 Luke Skywalker has. I think it's a retelling of of a new hope. But like you have to, you know. Actually, you make a really good point. You really make. I don't know how accurate I am, and I'd love for you to still weigh in. But I don't want to shut you down. I'm just. This is my opinion of what it is. I think that you make a really good point, though. But the reason as to why it's so much like New Hope is because it is verbatim what what Lucas did with Campbell's idea of the hero's journey. Uh, and for all of you who don't know what we're talking about, like, uh, how can I put this? Joseph Campbell was a, uh, a theorist when it came to like um, uh, storytelling. Uh, he is a very famous author who has been able to put forth different ways in which uh, human storytelling, religion, philosophy, and everything comes into play and how it's actually a, just different versions of the same thing. And you see this in, almost every movie that we see in one way or another, some of the theories that he's put out there over the, well, gosh, decades, um, sure. centuries, whatever. Uh, and we're talking about specifically the hero's journey, which is technically uh, in narratology and comparative mythology, the hero's journey or the monomyth is the common template of stories that involve a hero who goes on an adventure is victorious in a decisive crisis and comes home changed and transformed. And within that, the hero has to go through a number of things. Like very specifically, they have to be, you know, arrogant. They have to be given some sort of secret power. They have to be given a mentor, which they later use, uh, later lose, pardon me. And they have to go through some sort of tormentous action, which then brings their honor back to them after they've been disgraced and, and defeat. And they're able to come out on top and be the hero. And the whole journey is to change them, to make them a better person. Ultimately, it's to make us root for the person who's going through that and we see that verbatim in this movie we see paul scared we see paul egotistical he has this great scene uh with uh uh, rebecca ferguson's character in the tent where he finally Mm -hmm. realizes what he is and he Mm -hmm. yells at his mom screaming at her you know you turned me into a freak how could you do this to me so on and so forth this is great monologue where he uh I'll admit there were times in this movie where I did get the shivers a little bit because some of the dialogue and the uh, the things that people were saying was very powerful. And this right. scene, when Chalamet is has nothing but like you know a uh, a uh, a, a darkly lit set, and he's he's acting off of Ferguson as well, and she's a great focus for him. But he's just going through this situation where the character had this vision and like all of these epic like biblical stuff where he's talking about i see i see a desert filled with blood i see millions of people dying upon a throne bent upon my father's skull and they scream my name and then he's and then he uh yells at his mom you turned me into a Jez, uh, jesuit freak uh, blah 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 it's a really beautiful scene uh mm-hmm. and that's that's one thing that like kind of breaks up the mundane pacing of this movie for me and it's due specifically to exactly what you're talking about andres they're being honorable to the hero's journey and they're being honorable to uh, you know the new hope they, uh, this is something this is textbook this is literally this is literal textbook filmmaking and it's a uh, it's easy to see but i will admit when they embrace the camp i'm in for it it's when they try to make it so serious and slow things down with bad exposition uh, 
and, and, and they don't do a good job of explaining the universe. It takes you, you know, an hour and a half or something to realize how much trouble the royal family is in because they don't do enough with the exposition or the dialogue to let you know that uh, House Atreides has a, has a target on their head. I, I got that in the first 20 what? minutes. What? I did. You're killing I, I me. Don't, I, I don't know. You're but, killing um, me. So, so and, and that's what I think is so great about it is because maybe it's something that I anticipated. Maybe it's just something that I expect from a hero's journey. Maybe sure. it's just something that that I intuited, uh, you, you know, my intuition can't can You've me seen a lot. Of I am psychic. I've seen a lot of <laughs> movies and I've read a lot of scripts. So, um, no, but but for me, for me, I. I actually went in not really wanting to like this movie. Why? Um, just just because of too the much hype of or, it oh, and okay. hype yeah. and, and all of the things, right? I can respect that. Um, like, um, I I don't have a true love or affinity for any of these actors. Um, a lot of them have won me over over the years, yeah. and I really respect their careers and their and and what they've been able to do with it. Right. But like. I'm not going to see this movie because of an actor poll. <laughs> You're going to see it because I asked you to watch it. <laughs> I'm going to see it one because Denis. Yeah, 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 for sure. Like the director for is sure. So oh, he's so good. good. He's really good. Even though, even though you know, I did we do did we do a conversation about um about uh uh, uh Blade Runner? Oh, we did not. Uh, no. Okay. Yeah, because. I wasn't really interested in Blade Runner, <laughs> and I really didn't like Blade Runner. He does but, have this. He has such a subtle style. It's interesting but, to me. But if I'm if I'm playing it back in my mind, I can actually go. But I did like it because of the direction and because of the visuals and because of all of the things, um, and because it had Harrison Ford. But um, God bless and, Harrison Ford and Ryan Gosling. And but would and would Anna, would this and, <laughs> God. With but, Ryan Gosling. But on, the, but on but on this one, I didn't I wasn't watching this to see Rebecca. I wasn't right. even though I am becoming a big fan of hers. Yeah. I'm not watching it for Timothy. I'm not watching it for Isaac. I'm not watching it for Joss or, or Joss. Josh. I'm not watching it for uh What about Javier for, Bardem? He was in there. Di- well, yes, I'm watching it for Javier. Yeah. And it is yeah. safe. It's very yeah. safe. And that's that's a safe guess. No, but like all of these guys are really, really strong actors. I'm not watching it for that, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, what excited you about the movie then? As you were getting into it and you started, you you knew. See, you, the you scope. had you the had scope of the what scope. it is. Go that's into it. that. Go into that. So like, yeah. it, but we've seen the hero's journey before, Andrus. We've seen the story which, told before. Which, I wasn't worried about that for this one. I just wasn't. Well, what do you mean by the scope then? Like, because it's taking place oh, uh, over maybe galaxies just, and planets? No, maybe the or? experience. Maybe the experience is okay. probably a better a better way to say that. Is, um, it's it's a movie where the scope and the scale of it it's is huge. a Star Wars. It is. It is yeah, yeah. a Lord of the Rings. It is a, a gigantic setting, even though... I thought it was just going to be one movie. I didn't think it was a three-parter. Well, I, I'm but pretty sure, like, don't we should be careful with that too, because two-parter, six-parter, twenty-parter. There's definitely a sequel. We know there's that for sure. There's definitely something. Yeah, there's yeah. something coming. But I, it, I think it's a trilogy, though, isn't it? I'm ninety percent sure from what I've read. It, that has we know that a sequel is already in the works, but they haven't said definitively that there's been there's going to be a trilogy thing. But that's usually the. Uh, that that's kind of like the theory, I guess, from the uh, okay. the research yeah. that I've been doing. Re- regardless of what it is, yeah, I, I'm going to call it a trilogy or or a series. I'll just call it a series, right. and then we're safe. So um, then, then tell me then, if you can, uh, was it then the the scope and the and the cinematography that kind of outweighed the the pacing because this thing moved erratically for me. It's so funny that you say that because I did not have. Okay, so here's the thing. Yeah. Did you see it in the theater? I didn't see the theater. No, I saw it at home. Aha. Okay. okay. So here's the th- here's the deal. Okay. I I started it at home. Right. Right. And then I actually saw it in its entirety in the oh, theater. Man. Now here's the thing. Yeah. I only made it up into the point of um, them going to the new planet. And Spoiler alerts. Ex- Spoiler alerts. Shh. 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 I did not make it to the point of the attack on the city. Gotcha. Okay. So um, I I had watched it up to that point. And honestly, I was a little bit underwhelmed watching it on the small screen, which is why I would say 
anybody that is comfortable going to the theater to go, see this right. movie in the theater be safe and go it to- is a different experience absolutely I, 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 it is a thousand percent a movie that should be seen on the scale of a large screen well we were just talking about how imax was using new technology in this film you know which so makes a lot of sense yeah. now i've seen a couple movies in the theater um certainly a sense of vaccination situation mm-hmm. but but i also um went knowing that the movie theater was empty um sure. for some other movies yeah that's let's make that let's make that very clear i mean like we're you got to be safe but also you got to be a human being. So if you are vaccinated and you're using the proper masking and everything, go and see a yeah, movie. Yeah. Go and see but, a movie. But, but even still, I'm I'm also a fan of living life. Yeah, and, I feel you. And doing what you have to do right. in that sense. But um, there's... But it was like night and day for you because you saw like a quarter of it at home and then you like you what? saw the rest of it in the, in the, in the, in the theater. So there's a couple things that I want to say on to that point. Yeah. One is you're at home which is why I also have an office. Yes. I do not want to work at home because there are so many more distractions at home rather than what I can do at my office Word. as far as productivity. Yeah, no question. no question. So it's the same thing with the movie is you're only invested as far as you can okay. be invested watching the movie at your home because, oh, I need to use the restroom. Oh, I want a snack. Oh, I want to take it's a It's right there. Home. It's so Oh, convenient. I've got to go this. I yeah, 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 yeah. I've yeah, got to yeah. whatever. Um, and, and I don't know if anybody else feels the way about the movie watching experience at home. Honestly, I prefer to watch movies at home. Mm. It's, it's the comfort of my own, my own space. And, it's and your own bathroom. It, <laughs> I mean, honestly, literally thank you very much. <laughs> public restrooms are not great. Uh, um, but there is something about watching your first movie on the big screen. Watching that movie is the first every time. Yeah, no, I feel you. You're right. And it was so exciting to see it on the big screen because you're fully immersed. And you're focused on being. Are you fully immersed when you're watching at home? I'm not. No. How, how many times did you make a snack or or get a phone call or see a well, text Well, plenty of times. Like whatever. especially especially with like the Netflix stuff that we've talked about in right. previous episodes. Right. I'd, be, I'd be getting up and leaving the couch and doing whatever. But here, you make a good point. I am committed 100% to being entertained. And when you get to that right. mind frame, you can pick up things that you wouldn't right. otherwise. I can understand so, where you're coming from. So please go watch James Bond in the theater. For sure. Please go watch this movie in the theater. Please go watch anything epic in the theater that right. you want to be moved in and overcome with. Yeah. Be, sa- be another- safe, but live your life. Be safe. First and foremost, everybody. Yeah. It, but there's a world of difference. I agree with you. I might have to it watch just, this movie again. The, we'll find out. There it just is. But to go back to the pacing. Yes. I did. I did not feel that in the theater. I did feel that at home. So I know exactly what you're talking about. Mm. Well, I think like dealing with the, this, dealing with that, it's it's a big hurdle to cross. But the overall, uh, the uh, the pros definitely weigh the cons in this movie. And uh, I would definitely suggest people to go see it. And I would suggest people to go see it in the theater too, uh, just so they can you know be part of this uh, be part of this experience. Let's I'm gonna move- validate. I'm going to validate something else about what you said. Though. Yeah, I wasn't watching this for character either. That's I was moved more by the by the, the entire. His- the scope essence, 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 of what the history is. of the director, the story he's trying to tell. He's been he's been trying to do this for a long time. He was actually given permission to do this four years ago. It only okay. got it only got off of uh, off the runway uh, in the past two years because uh, the the ways in which you're able to present it uh, was uh, you know profit and that kind of thing. Yeah, it yeah. makes sense. But uh, yeah, that's that's a pretty good. I think that's a pretty good summary of our feelings regards to it overall. Let's jump into specializations because you said something. Very interesting during the top of our conversation. And it was that the the cast here, though ridiculously stacked and competent, you're not saying yeah. you're not that, that that you didn't say opposite to that, but you didn't come here for the cast. And you also mm-hmm. said that over the course of the film, some of the actors here surprised you. So I'd really like to go into then into your speciality when it comes to like, you know, the, I want you to put your casting agent head uh, hat on, Andrus, and talk to me about like maybe some misses or maybe some surprises that you found while you were watching this movie. What was the biggest out of, uh, out of all of that? Yeah, I don't know that there were any misses and I don't know that there were any surprises because okay. the cast is so good at what they do that 
like literally there's this chemistry between every actor in this movie that kind of boggles my mind a little bit now i will i will I talk mean, like, about the ones that i didn't know anything about like the thing i think before i let you go like there was mm-hmm. there was there was some stuff with zendaya uh who played uh chani that kind of i mean all she's doing is like looking over her shoulder and like being <laughs> princess leia so <laughs> That to the side. That to the side. Right, right. Every every interaction for me, these actors are so good. They have like these quiet ways of just like immediately you see hate, respect, love. You see it all just like in their body language and everything. But please, please go ahead. What, what what were some of the things that you wanted to talk about when it came to like the way in which these these actors interacted in regards to the foot? Well, okay. The so for for one, I'm not super familiar with uh, with uh, the doctor. Uh, his name is Chang Chen. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought he was great. I had no idea. I mean, I've, I've, I've seen, um, have I seen any of his body of work? Maybe here and there. Uh, not a, he, mostly foreign films. Uh, yeah, uh, not, not a familiar, and everything, not a familiar yeah. face, um, but super good and super poignant as far as um, his character and what happens to the, to the main characters because of mm-hmm. what he does. Um, I thought that he was terrific. Uh the end. Well, I mean, he was he was equal to everybody else. There's well, also the um, his his capabilities in Japan are are ridiculous. He he won the third uh, Osaka Asia Film uh, Festival for Best Actor. Uh, he he uh, got a three time nomination for the Golden Horse Awards, and he was uh, nominated for Best Actor on more than one occasion uh, at the uh, Berlinale and Cannes. Uh, uh, film festival on uh, more than one occasion. So he's, this is one thing that you've actually brought to my attention. And it's something okay. that, that I really enjoy about talking with you where it's obviously, Hey, everybody out there, they make movies in other countries. No, they don't. What? It's only America. That's no. Well, I, I thought, no. Oh, okay. American well, that, movies, that completely, that's, that's that, all it is. That completely defeats my point. Okay. No, go ahead. When you, and you, you've opened my eyes to the, to the fact that, Hey, yeah, we have, you know, Chalamet, we have Momoa. Hey, did you know about Chen? Did you sure. did you know about uh uh <laughs> uh Ferris? Did you know about uh uh Rochevel? Did you know about Yuan? Uh and you brought things to my attention because you have been able to open me up to some foreign films where it's especially like coming out of like, you know, like South Korea and Japan and stuff like that, where it's like this ridiculous amount of talent and I, I I'm gonna say it. You know how how dare we how dare we have uh, Chang Chen uh, in in a part that uh, you know isn't isn't you know first string on this hey, on this cast. He, he is first string, I guess. He, he's he was in both locations. He's yeah, first string. I gotcha. <laughs> You're right. Um, no, but I keep but, interrupting I, you. I apologize. So, Go ahead. No, but here's the thing: there are other Asian actors that could have taken that role from him. Sure. That people are aware of. Yeah. That people do know of, etc. Et in the American market, you mean? In the, in the, in the, in the American market. market. Yeah. Right, right, right. But for me, I think that that was the first time that I saw uh, that actor, and I really liked what he did. Was, gotcha. It, it didn't. It didn't face me one way or the other because it, he was a character in the movie. Um, same same thing with uh, Sharon Duncan Brewster, right. who plays uh, uh, Kynes. She was awesome. She was amazing. And I, th- I, and like, there's nothing really super special about what she does, other than that she's this badass pilot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> takes them out and shows them around and, and everything that happens. Well, with her. I felt I felt but, bad. I felt bad when she died. Spoiler alerts. Stop it. She got eight when she got eaten by the worm, but she took Stop she, it! She took down I the, wasn't going there. She took down the Emperor's Super Soldiers in the process. What a hero. Right. Right. So, but but that that side of it too was okay. I went back and I looked at some of her credits and I actually have seen her before. Yeah, yeah, that's always a and, puzzle. And surprise. that's and that's really cool because like, okay, now now I'm actually a bigger a fan bigger of this fan. actor now of what of of who she is and, and what she's done. Right. Uh, this entire cast is that though. Like if you didn't know I the body that. of work, I love if you that. didn't know the body of work of these actors before mm-hmm. you're now given the opportunity to research them and find some new inspiration. So after and, seeing this, and, after seeing this fandom. movie, after the seeing this movie, if you're not a fan, you'll become a fan. If you are a fan, you're going to have a chance to become a bigger one. And hey, that, that, that's something special. I think. I like it. Now, the the one thing that I could do without mm. is uh, 
<laughs> Don't you dare say Bautista. Don't you dare speak ill no. of my um, favorite, my favorite uh, not guardian him. of the galaxy. Not him. Be careful. That, that scars guard. Um, the, oh, the suit, get the fuck! Come the on! Suit, no, the suit, the, di the digital aesthetic of who he is in it. <laughs> As an actor, he's terrific. Who's I did be, not who? like what they did with Chubby Bubby. Right, put, put like Danny him. DeVito in there, right? I mean, let's be real. I mean, I mean it's just like, no, I, I understand why him. he is I what he is, but it's, it, he's this gluttonous character. And I just, I appreciate that they, they gave it gave him to us in that in that aesthetic because it's just like it's so indulgent yeah. and so gross you can say it <laughs> I, well i don't want to say gross but it was gross <laughs> i loved i loved uh to um, speak on that the uh the other hakonan uh the advisor played by uh david uh uh that's um, who uh, was um, Polka Dot Man in the, <laughs> in the most yes. recent. I mean, yes. what a character actor. Well, and he's so good at what oh, he's he does, so too. good at what he's just He looked completely different, too. Like, they had him in the ball prosthetic and, yeah. like, you know, the xenomorph yeah. suit and whatever mm -hmm. up to his neck. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. did such a great, great job. Uh, it's cool. And Josh Brolin just yells a lot, but I'm always, I'm always ready to get that. I, I, I'm okay. For real. <laughs> jo Josh is, like... So good. Yeah. And, and like, okay, so here's here's the honest truth, right? Yeah. I've always been a Josh Brolin fan, but when I became a bigger fan. Yeah. <laughs> when? It's so bad. I I can't help it. Men in black. Get out of here. <laughs> because he did Tommy Lee Jones so oh good. My God. He was fantastic. Okay, we're moving so, on. So here's we're moving no, on. No, but here's the thing. <laughs> it's the little it is. nuances. It's the little things that make fans. Yes. That's what did it for me. Yeah, I feel you. I'm right forget there with you. Forget Goonies. Forget it. Forget Goonies. Men in black. Oh boy, dude. <laughs> I'm sorry, oh, I had to throw that out. So many people that's, right now. that's how ridiculous I am. That's how ridiculous <laughs> I, am. I get it. It's fine. Move on. All right, we'll move but on. He's I, an amazing. He is an amazing actor, actor yeah. and I really appreciate the what he's been doing. I really do. And I'm so glad he's in the. Movies. Yeah, me too. Me too. I'm Perfect. really happy too that you you do bring that uh, up to front too. Like watch movies that will give you a chance to become a fan. And if you don't become a fan, at the very least, you might uh, become a bigger fan. So that's that's just a really beautiful thing to say about casting in general, I think. Which is MIB, important. Josh. MIB. MIB. <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, the sound. You're, you're special. The please. sound. The sound in here was. Um, uh, okay, so. Let's dive okay, in. you just said it. You just said it. Okay. Yeah. We've heard. How can I put this? Okay. Listen. <laughs> Denny, <laughs> Denny Villeneuve is a incredible director. He is an absolute genius when it comes to things the director has to do. I just don't understand why he reuses the soundtrack from Arrival in every movie that he makes. Can I answer that for you? Yeah. <laughs> you better be careful. You better watch yourself, sir. Mind your words. <laughs> um. So, so who's who's his uh who's his? Score oh, artist? you're right. You're right. He probably has like the whole. Sorry, I'm you're, just saying. you're absolutely right. God, hold on a second. I'm checking IMDb right now. I know. I I, I haven't I haven't looked to see yet. That that's one that I just came up with mm -hmm. because I'll tell you that. Huge sound Ever. department, but I can't see who did the score. Hold on a second. Well, I mean, John Williams is John Williams, and it always sounds like John Williams. Exactly. That's the Danny thing. Danny Elfman is Danny Elfman, and it always sounds like Danny Elfman. So we got Williams in this particular situation. <laughs> so, well, so let's see who did it. Um, uh, are you still scrolling? Because I'm trying to find Yeah, it. Peter Afferman was the music supervisor. Um, Clint Bennett was the supervising music editor. Hans Zimmer. Was it Hans Zimmer, really? <laughs> well, well, that's the first one that came up. Oh, so. God, I totally missed that. Okay, well, that explains it then. I mean, it's like the situation here where I don't understand. <sighs> it is Hans Zimmer, mother lover. Okay, cool. Yeah, music by Hans Zimmer, yeah. right? 
And did Hans Zimmer also do Arrival? Yes. Yes, he did. And did Hans Zimmer yes, also Yes, he did. Yes. And did yes. Hans Zimmer also do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I get your point, obviously. Uh, okay. I just don't understand. It's like this... Blah. Okay. So one thing that I do find frustrating, specifically when it comes to sci-fi, is that you know that whenever you're going... And, and Zimmer aside, we know what Zimmer's stuff sounds like. He's a brilliant man. He's a brilliant, mm-hmm. brilliant, brilliant uh, musicologist. He's a brilliant composer. He's brilliant. Who the heck am I? Who the heck am I to criticize one Hans Zimmer? I mean, I'm not. I'm nobody. You can't. By I the can't. Way. I'm sorry. You just can't. I can't. I just can't. But you can say if I have to hear alike. if I have to hear one more tuba solo when the big ship comes down and you hear the the Inception kind of BS when like I the was freighter just say it's the Inception sound it comes down into the I'm gonna I'm going to lose my I'm gonna lose my brain I, I don't. I get, I get they're trying to like make this massive universal thing where like it's huge pads, symphonic destinies being played about amongst the cosmos. Well, no less than 18 tubas and a brass section of billions. But is it epic? It is, it is epic. And that is why they do that it. That is why they do it. You're right. Uh, right. the, the sound effects were completely, completely cool. There was some original okay. stuff here, especially when it came to like, you know, the, uh, the four shields that they used uh, for combat. Um, I just wish I could have heard something different in the in the soundtrack. No, but I mean, no, like, what, 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 is, what is he supposed to do? I mean, I'm, 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 I'm expecting. What am I expecting? Like an accordion solo when the uh, when the Harkonnens like you know break you through know hyperspace. What? Honestly, honestly, maybe, maybe, maybe there is such a a standard of what these composers do. Yeah, that there's no real variance allowed because no, 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 no. No, I want I want Inception. I got gotcha. you. No, 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 no. I want Superman. Yeah, you're right. No, no, no. I want I want uh, I want Darth Vader. I want Jaws. I want the Imperial March every time. I, yeah, so I mean, it is. You know, Andres, you're right. Do you know what would be great though? And I'll I'll jump on your bandwagon for this. Hey, it is a new movie. It is a new scope and a yeah. new world and a new environment. Yeah, that's true. Give us, give us that, so it doesn't feel like a tuba. Yeah, I feel. So it doesn't I hear feel you. like it's just a set of strings. I'm just trying so to, I'm just trying to fight back from like when you did mention like it's, it's New Hope in the desert, and you're right, it, it really is. It's just a lot slower and a lot less, a lot less campy. But it's still a good movie, and it's still worth listening to, and it's still worth people. Uh, you know, just paying attention to. It's not an important film, but at the very least, it's an entertaining one. And uh, if you're going to go see it, go see it. Uh, but that's about it. But that's about it, everybody. We're going to probably close it out on that one. Uh, we really do appreciate the fact that you're taking time to, you know, listen to us meander on and complain and offer constructive criticism and also, uh, you know, offer ideas that might be way way in outer space. But whatever happens, whatever we say, whatever we do, uh, remember... We may be wrong, but it's your job to tell us. Anders, thank you so very much again for giving me your time. Always a pleasure to talk to you. I hope that things remain busy, and I uh, hope you uh, take take uh, keep up the meditation, my friend. I don't want to see this, uh, you know, be anything detrimental. I'm not worried about you. I just hope that uh, you know everything stays productive and fun because you know why else do it. You know, but thank you, and thank you very much for talking with me. It's always thank a pleasure, really. Uh, and thank you for uh, taking time to listen to us. Uh, feel free to uh, like and subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on SoundCloud. Go ahead and email us pullfocuspod at gmail.com and let us know how we're doing. But in the meantime, everybody, uh, stay safe. Be good to one another. COVID's still out there. Do what you can to make the world a better place where you can. And thank you for doing so. If you are, we're here with you. We stand with you. Uh, but in the meantime, we will talk to you next time. And uh, yeah, take care. Bye. Bye.